Hey everyone, this is Aiden, and I'll be discussing Mona build for support, bursty damage, or as a main DPS in this video coming right up. Mona is a bursty DPS, and even if you picked her up from the 50 50 chance, she can add a big punch to your team as she is hydro. You're looking to abuse elemental reactions, including freeze, vaporize, and electrocute. She comes with a unique style. Take some time to get used to her and once you master her mechanics and understand how she works, she can be a very supportive or even do the most damage in your team. While her normal and charge attacks do hydro damage indefinitely, her charge attacks are really good and this will allow your Mona to be your main DPS and her E taunts nearby enemies which comes with dot and explosion damage. Her Q skill is where she can see high numbers and it will deal ton of damage and also adding more damage deal to even all of your allies making this skill very OP especially because she comes with energy recharge as she ascends making you possibly to continuously spam this ability and so you can deal most damage in Genshin Impact. Hey what's up? I'm gonna quickly go over Mona's attributes real quick. Mona is level 90. For the weapons, I'm using the Lost Prayer of the Sacred Winds for the Charge Attack build, Refinement Rank 1, and the Witsit, Refinement Rank 2, and I'm using this weapon for her burst. For the Constellation, she is 0 Constellation. For the Talent, level 7 on the normal one Charge Attacks, level 2 on the E skill, and level 9 on the Q skill. One thing you want to look for is the charge attack damage. Because she is Hydro, she's going to be really easy to proc Vaporize if you have a Pyro character in your team. And so going for charge attack build can be very good, especially if you go for constellations with Mona. But basically you're looking at her Q damage and pretty much her Q damage is the second highest in the game at level 9, 752%. And she's going to be getting 58% increased damage bonus during the omen duration and all of your party members are going to get it. Especially because it has energy cost of only 60, you're going to try to cast this as much as you can. Especially because she comes with energy recharge as ascension. Q skill is very OP and you want to utilize this as much as you can. So what I recommend is with Mona, if you're using her as a support DPS, as bursty DPS, max out the Q first. And I'll go over details of the Q and I'll explain it in detail coming up very soon in this video and her passive talent waterborne destiny is pretty good because she's gonna get 20% of her energy recharge rate as hydro damage bonus so if you decide to go energy recharge to sands which I will go over in the artifact section of this video actually I'll leave the timestamp in the description so you can skip over some parts of the video that you don't want to watch but that's gonna make her be able to spam her Q skill much more on top of getting hydro damage bonus so this is a very good talent i'm going to be describing bonus team comp elemental reactions and utilizing bonus burst ability starting right now Vaporize reaction has potential to deal a lot of damage and with Mona you're looking to maximize and give more damage dealing support whether you have pyro main carry or support having a pyro character in your team comp will pack a huge punch freeze reaction is one elemental reaction i try to use as much as i can for the sustain you can feel safe, especially the hardest content in the game, but the freeze extending to melt combo seems to work well and that will be the benefit of using hydro, pyro, and cryo characters. Electrocute reaction has potential to deal a lot of damage as well, especially in areas with a lot of enemies. The old school Mona Lisa and facial combo demonstrates how good electrocute can be. Mona's burst does massive hydro damage at level 9, it comes with 752% and 58% damage bonus. This ability has potential to deal most damage and if you want to make sure to apply pyro element first, then use Mona's burst. When Mona casts the burst, wait about 1.75 seconds for the internal cooldown of the game, then pop the bubble with the pyro attack and you should see huge, huge amounts of damage. Here you can see with sucrose decreasing hydro elemental resistance of the enemy and giving much more elemental mastery from her passive and with Bennett to apply pyro and more attack from his Q, Mona can give high damage numbers along with other main carries. One mechanic you can use is with by pressing F1 and wait for the time then come back to the game to inflict the damage. It takes some time to understand the wait time. Once you do a few, you will be doing it without any difficulty.
Besides the burst, you're looking to recharge energy effectively and in order to do that, you want to quickly do normal and charge attacks while using the E skill. The animation for her fourth hit is kinda of long and one thing you can do is cancel the animation by jumping forward, backward, or sideways. This way you can save time and do more damage in return. Now to go over the best weapons for Mona, Skyward Atlas and Lost Prayer of the Sacred Winds are both real good choices. I like to use Lost Prayer, really like the crit on it, and with this weapon, I tend to not get the stacks because I use her as a burst support dps it's a great weapon though during co-op one of the best four star weapon might even top five stars if refined a little bit is the wit sits as this weapon packs the damage potential mona needs as you're looking to swap her in and do bursty damage and swap her out it feels like this weapon is one of the best choice for dps mona i can really tell the difference in damage numbers when comparing this weapon sacred winds as a free to play weapon mappa mare is a great choice as well getting the elemental mastery with elemental damage bonus is going to be good especially if you are lucky enough to get refinements in general though having crit damage or crit rate is going to be helpful in distributing stats along with artifacts the bp weapons are always going to be valuable as they come with crit rate as for the best artifacts on mona four piece heart of death is the charge attack build you can go for. This 4 piece set works really well especially if you have constellations on Mona and you're using her as a main DPS. Other than that, you're looking to maximize her Q skill damage and going for 2 piece heart of depth. Along with 2 piece noblesse, getting that 20% increased burst damage seems like a top choice. Getting good rolls on crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, energy recharge, and elemental mastery is going to be key. And with Mona, you have some options as you can go 2 piece glad or 2 piece wonders along with 2 piece heart of death as well. For the sands, you can go for attack percent or energy recharge. I personally think going energy recharge is not the worst thing you can do. You'll find spamming her burst is going to be more valuable, especially in Spiral Abyss and future unknown harder content. And don't forget, 20% of her energy recharge turns into hydro damage bonus from her passive talent. For the cup, definitely go hydro damage bonus and for the hat, go for crit rate or crit damage depending on what you are lacking. As for my final thoughts, I feel like Mona is a great addition to any team composition. She is very bursty in damage and you can fit her right in and she doesn't take too much of your time as your main DPS can do more damage alongside with her. Make sure to have fun with your Mona and while you're on cruise control, help me out with the subscribe button and notification. I'll see you live Saturdays 2 p.m. Asia time and 12 a.m. Eastern time. My name is Aiden and I'll see you in the next video.